Welcome to Corrective Consciousness episode 271, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Bolt, and this is Lotus Prince. And we have uh, a bummer of a show, um, but um, I, I guess we could look at it as a celebration. Yeah, remembering the best of, which yeah. most of it is the best of. But uh, yeah, un- unfortunately, um, last week we, we saw the passing of um, Norm MacDonald, a favorite comedian of a lot of people's. Uh, Just at 61. Mine. Yeah, at, at, at the young age of 61. Um, and you, of... You, you know what? It's funny because I'd always known he was around, but I never really saw him on TV. I just heard the name. And I'd seen him in little bit parts in, like, Billy Madison or, yeah. or like, as Death and Family Guy. Um, and I'd seen the movie Dirty Work, but I never really saw him for what he was most famous for, except for starting from, like, a, a few years ago when I would see YouTube clips of him on Conan and Letterman from, like, 15 years ago. Yeah. And that stuff I mean, is, like, endlessly funny. Like, the thing he was really famous for was being on Saturday Night Live doing yeah. the Weekend Update, but I never saw that. Like, I, I didn't watch almost any SNL, and I never saw any with him in it, so I was just aware of the name Norm MacDonald. So when I went up and looked at him, like, decades later, holy shit was I missing out. So, um, he... He took over SNL after uh, Dennis uh, uh, Dennis Miller, I believe. I think Den- Dennis Miller was the person before him uh, in the early '90s, and um, so uh, SNL. Um, when it when it comes to the show, um, Weekend Update date is usually the best part of snl um it, it's it, a bunch of quick jokes like it, it's something like and it's usually a, a related to current events um, yeah like yeah. it's like what a lot of talk show hosts would do in their opening monologue this thing came up in the news today funny joke but that was just like a like a segment on snl but it, it's more of a parody of local news um yeah so, well that, that's the thing a lot yeah. of it is like just like dumb like one of my favorite jokes of his i think i've ever heard and it's not even the really iconic stuff which we will talk about but one thing made me genuinely like laugh out loud even though i was just watching it on youtube which was uh, he was talking about i I forgot her name but she was like a 10 year old girl at the time but she was newsworthy because she was in a family of like billionaires so she's like the world's richest little kid so (laughs) so mcdonald said what's it like being the world's richest little girl well to give you an idea (laughs) at her birthday party they had two cakes (laughs) funny. i think yeah yeah she was a kennedy i think yeah that's what Um, it was that was so funny like like come on like that that's where a lot of his well not most or anything but a bunch of his humor comes from like understatement yeah like um i remember one one of his little opening bits uh i think it was was stand up on one of the talk show hosts or something when oh we got norm mcdonald here was uh, he opens with like you know the more i learn about this hitler guy the less i trust him he seems like a real jerk (laughs) okay a a, like few decades too late but of course that's the joke yeah um the the news is talking about how we should be afraid of iraq iran north korea i'm not afraid of those countries i'll tell you what i'm afraid of Germany. Now, I don't know how many of you are history buffs around here, <laughs> but uh, there was a point where Germany declared war on the world. And you'd think a conflict like that would be over in about five minutes, but actually, it was close. <laughs> it was like, Jesus. Yeah, um, he he was well known for uh, stating the very obvious fact Um like yeah. he, he he would be like um you know people are always worried about a terrorist attack but um did yes. you did yeah. you did you hear that your heart can attack you Dude, your heart can just attack you <laughs> <laughs> it can attack me it's just like oh my god that's so stupid and one but, other thing i really like by the way is the way it's especially funny if the joke doesn't land yeah He'll just do it again. Yeah. Like, I'm skipping ahead here, but part of the uh, the roast of Bob Saget oh on Comedy God. Central yeah. was like, uh, you know, his face is beautiful like a flower. A cauliflower? 
your face looks like a cauliflower. <laughs> it's it's a like, music. oh, you didn't laugh. Well, now you're yeah. not really not going to laugh. <laughs> I, I think my favorite one of those was, and all of us wish you well. No, it was like a lot of people wish you well. They wish you'd fall in a well. They want to murder you with a well. <laughs> they want to murder you with a well. That's what it says on this card. <laughs> it just freaking slays well, well, me. <laughs> well, let, let's let's go a little bit in chronological order. Sure, sure, uh, sure. So, so he was. Um, he, this is where he first like really kind of hit it. I mean, he he was doing stand up in uh, in Canada. He was he was a yeah. he's a, a famous Canadian, and um, he. Um, you know, started working on SNL, and they they only put you in in their best people in Weekend Update. I mean, just think about the people yeah. that have been in Weekend Update. They're all super famous, right? Um, you have Chevy Chase, who was the original Weekend Update guy, obviously. Uh, Dennis Miller, who became a gigantic c- comedian. I mean, he's fallen from grace since then, but yeah, like he yeah, yeah. he he was huge uh, in the in the nineties and 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 two thousands. Um, and then him, and then Colin Quinn, who's also um, very prominent. You have uh, Tina Fey and um, and jeez, uh, oh, uh, Leslie Nope. What what's her, what's her name? Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm forgetting. Were you gonna say Leslie Nielsen? No, Leslie Nope from. Um, okay, I was like, what? From from Parks and Recs. Uh, what's her name? Okay, um, I, her... I I don't know. I don't. I haven't watched the show. Oh, okay. Well, her her partner in crime, um, uh, and. Um. Uh, you also have Jimmy Th- uh, Amy Puller. I'm sorry. Um, there you go. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Jimmy Fallon, who now hosts the Tonight yeah, yeah, Show. The Tonight Show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, Tina Fey, who who writes every good thing in in comedy. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Thirty Rock. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. A uh, whole bunch of awesome movies, including Mean Girls. Um. Mm-hmm. Just like tons and tons of, of great comedy, uh, coming out out of all these people, uh, Seth Meyers who hosts uh, Conan's old show, um, geez, uh, you know, and and Colin, Colin Jost and uh, Michael Che who are awesome as well. So um, they're they're really funny. So I mean, there's just like tons of tons of. Uh, like the best of SNL is right, right then and there. He didn't, uh, he didn't um, participate in a whole lot of sketches. Um, he was only in a few. Um, yeah, and, and he he made a point of that afterward after he left the Weekend Update, which we'll get to later. Usually, the Weekend Update person doesn't um, participate in a lot of sketches. I mean, you, you you very rarely see Michael Che in a in a sketch as well. So, um, but. They don't need to. They're 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 really good at doing the daily. Um, yeah, and the, speaking the of which, by the way, this is something that uh, Bill Burr mentioned after the fact. But remembering that this is before the internet became what it is, like the internet barely existed. This is before the internet, as we know it. Yeah, and this is before a thousand different channels on TV. Like there were cable sure. channels, but we didn't have hundreds and hundreds. So like. If you were on the weekend update, you were straight up the king of comedy. Like you yeah. were the person that people saw. Like you yeah. were it. Um, and it was also um, the place where the edgy comedy happened. This was before the Daily Show. Um, so like, yeah. Um, the the edgy, um, like like at the time, uh, Norm got Johnny, his fucking Johnny edgy Carson jokes in was there. probably going on, right? Um, it it yeah. was it, it was either Johnny Carson or just had transitioned to Jay Leno. Um, so, so it was like that, and that, that's, it's a little edgy, but it's only, it, it's basically clean family fun for the most yeah, part. Yeah, but yeah, the, the weekend update, they, they, they got their shots in. Yeah, exactly, and, um, uh, especially with, uh, with Dennis Miller, and then, uh, Norm Macdonald just took it to a whole new level. Norm Macdonald didn't um, fuck around. It's funny, because he's, like, his friends love him he seems like a really cool guy like if you actually know him for real instead of if you're just an acquaintance sure. or whatever but don't ever fuck with him yeah so he um apparently in in um like personally if you knew him personally he was a very generous person that was very 
intent on paying attention to what you had to say. Yeah, Bob Saget um, loved him. Yeah, App- apparently everybody did. Um, he, like, uh, especially with fans and stuff, they he would absolutely listen and have a good conversation with you and, yeah. and really, like, um, put a lot of thought into what, he w- what, what you were saying to him. Um, and he was known to be a very generous and kind person um, if you knew him uh, personally. But um, he always had a self-destructive streak and i'll get into that with with snl in particular because it shows there yeah um so um he um made jokes about forbidden stuff and always has um but yeah that's that's the whole thing with uh a certain aspect of the weekend update yeah so at, at the time um uh, Michael Jackson's first uh, public um, like like scandal was going on, and he mercilessly um, made fun of him. Um, like and and then also the O.J. Simpson trial happened. Yeah, I was going to mention the O.J. Simpson. It, thing. it was both. It was both. Um, so O.J. O. Simpson trial was happening, and uh, of course that was a big. Th- thing at the time everybody was following that thing um and uh it was also even like a racially divided uh kind of thing at the time as well because the rodney king um and la riots stuff was was happening in the early 90s so there was like a a lot of stuff behind it despite the fact that um you know it 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 was also like it, it he was also one of the most famous you know athletes of all time at the time too so it, it was like a big deal it was a big deal and uh apparently one of the any um nbc um like yeah, ceos O'Meyer. was a personal friend of oj simpson <laughs> yeah and he told norm to stop making these jokes because like norm had a lot of jokes that were just like he's guilty like a yeah. lot of the t- a lot of the times uh, a lot of the time the joke would be like well, a current development in the trial is happening, and then joke about how O.J. Simpson is guilty, but sometimes it would just blindside you. Like, oh, there's a new Dr. Seuss book out. It's called Green Eggs and Ham, and O.J. Simpson is guilty. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> it just, it, it just come out of nowhere. Yeah, and um, he they specifically said, hey, lay off the Michael Jackson jokes, and hey, lay off the... Um, uh, O.J. Simpson, Simpson jokes, Simpson. Yeah. and he proceeded to do uh, one of the most biting um, Michael Jackson jokes I've ever heard. Um, e- even still to this day, it's hack to make fun of Michael Jackson, but this joke in particular, I'm not going to say it, um, but look it up. Uh, yeah. It is um, r- really funny, but also insanely offensive. Um, yeah, like, I-, I didn't even know about this, but I was looking at the OJ stuff. Now, here's what surprised me. Without having watched SNL back in the day, what I thought happened was he told three or four jokes, was told to stop, and then told no, six or seven more. No, every night he made he made jokes. Yeah, every, I, I, every I, I, week. I went to YouTube, and I was like, Norm MacDonald, OJ Simpson. And remembering that this is like a Daily Show little bit, here's the thing that happened in the news. Joke? You know, these are like 20-second jokes? There's over 30 fucking minutes of OJ jokes. Like, it's relentless. <laughs> yeah, so somebody told him specifically, it wasn't even his boss, it was his boss's boss's boss. Um, yeah, well, he made a point of that. Who was yeah. the boss? Like, Lorne Michael? Lorne Michaels is, is the boss of this. Yeah, yeah. He, he made a point when he was telling him on Letterman. Letterman's like, well, Lorne Michaels owns the show. Did he fire you? And he's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh okay like so what the, the, fuck? the guy the guy who was running nbc at the time wanted him to stop yeah yeah um and uh he he basically went oh uh no i'll, I'll i'm gonna say the joke now like no no it, no, no, no. It, it, it wasn't that i think he said okay and yeah. then when it did a thousand more jokes <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's one of those deals where it's just like i'm uh, now i'm really gonna say it like well, you, yeah, you it, might it not like, have even it, said it, it it was like that that case i something. forgot if it was the emmys or the golden globes i want to say the golden globes yeah where they invited ricky gervais but told him not to do insult comedy and he was like okay and then when he showed up he's like i'm a fucking insult comedian like what did you think was gonna happen and then just yeah. did insult comedy and everybody got mad <laughs> <laughs> the last one was like 
uh, like I, almost unbearable. It was so cringy. Um, but, yeah, I like yeah. I I didn't actually like it, but yeah, I didn't. Like not it gonna lie, what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he 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 literally was telling people he didn't want to do it leading up to it, and then continued to say it while he was on stage. Um, yeah, I, I, my my actual favorite part of that though was they was like, they can't stop me. I, I'm live. This is live. I could do anything. <laughs> it was great. Uh, and he just, like, was constantly cursing. And, and uh, a lot of the stuff he was saying was, like, it wasn't even funny. It was just in bad taste. Uh, but, yeah, like, like, like I said, I didn't like it. But, like, yeah. like I, I, I'll repeat myself. What do you think was going to happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but Norm's stuff was actually insanely funny. Um, and, yeah. Like, and, like, and some of his jokes of would not be retold today like he's used some offensive language before and he's gone into offensive subjects before yeah. but i mean that was like, part of a part of what made him funny was that he didn't care whether those things were offensive um but and, but, but not only that though yeah. but like the jokes were actually funny because like if you go back to andrew dice clay for example sure. he was the king of comedy in the 80s he was untouchable sure but like i, I never i never heard him so first, I looked the him- first comedian to sell out <laughs> madison square garden yeah. yeah, so I looked him up on YouTube, like, a year or two ago, and most of the stuff I just didn't care for, because it was less jokes and more just punching down. With yeah. Norm, it was offensive, but it was, well, s- a couple of things, are, but most of it was actual jokes, so, like, I won't repeat this to my friends or family, but, alright, that's that's pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those, like, man, I, I should be offended by this, but this is goddamn funny. Um, yeah. Like, it, it, it was always that kind of humor. Um, but, yeah, he, he straight up told probably the best um, o, OJ joke ever, and I'm not, I'm not going to repeat it because, again, um, yeah, you cool. know, but uh, look, look it up on, on his last night. Basically... Yeah. Just like with a it's look at the camera, like oh, I'm gonna say this. And, well, no, well, that's and what I'm I was gonna, gonna mention. For saying that, it. That's what I was gonna mention. By the way, is like because not all of those jokes landed. A bunch of them got laughs and applause from the audience, and some of them got uncomfortable, like, mm, and a couple of them got boos. But the best part is, if he ever got nothing or if he got boos, like it looked like he was amused that that happens yeah like, he just wanted a reaction he didn't he'll, care well no he does he yeah. like he looks at the camera and like grins a little bit like waits three or four seconds which is a long time when you're doing live tv with nothing and then just goes to the next thing like again i'm gonna i'm gonna skip ahead for a second but during the comedy roast of bob saget where like zero of his jokes were landing because he was doing like knock knock jokes the entire time yeah like he just waits and there's this awkward silence, and that itself is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So he he gets fired from SNL uh, for for telling that very specifically that joke. Um, well, well, uh, well, he 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 got removed from the Weekend Update because yeah. like he did not get fired from SNL. They said they were going to put him in sketches, and he was like, "Well, I don't really want to do sketches." Well, he wanted to leave the program, and yeah. like eventually he was able to, um, which led to. One of the most savage things I think he's ever done, which was a year later. Did you ever see his opening monologue? Yeah, I was going to say, um, this this whole thing is really goofy and stupid because they knew how, just how good he was. So they, they gave him his own show after they fired him, which is yeah. really the same company that fired him it's hired him again. Which is so stupid. <laughs> like, well, no, but what was amazing though is that, like, I, I think part of it was that he was going to promote his movie, uh, Dirty Work. No, 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 no. This, the, I'm, I'm telling you, he made his, he made a, a sitcom called Norm at the time. No, um, I know about that, but oh. I'm talking about when he went back to host SNL. Well, yeah, th- this was because of that sitcom. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So it's promoting something different, but it's, this was the most like one of the mi- most vicious things he's done in his career, and that includes. 30 minutes straight of jokes about oj simpson who like <laughs> may be a murderer even yeah. in 2019 he tweeted at him the fucking balls on this guy but like he went back to snl and he he talked about how like he used to have the weekend update and then he was removed um and, and he opened it with a uh, a pretty funny bit too where um he said like uh you know well like the the people who uh you know, fired me. They said you can't work here anymore. 
And uh, I said, well, why not? And they said, you're not funny. Now, normally that would be grounds for uh, a lawsuit, but I, I do a comedy show, so I, I guess they got me there. <laughs> uh, but, but then he went on to say, like, so now, just a year ago, I was not considered funny enough to be in the building. And today, I'm hosting the show. So, what happened? I was trying to imagine how much I've improved over the past year or so, and then it hit me. Wait a minute. I haven't gotten funnier. The show just really blows. <laughs> and he says this on fucking live TV on the show that the people are there to see. Like, that's like... And, like, Bill Burr has talked about this multiple times. When you, like... Bill Burr is the guy, like, you informed me of this. I wasn't aware. Bill Burr was the guy who, when he was getting heckled at, like, uh, yeah. a stand-up he was doing in, like, an, a festival in Philadelphia. Uh, and, you know, well, like... That, uh, th this is, uh, by the way, this is, um, the, the the thing he's that Lotus is talking about is one of the best comedy sets of all time. It's fantastic. And it it... it 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 is particularly great because he's making fun of my hometown, but um... yeah, well, he starts just assaulting the audience so much for minutes that they eventually start to kind of like it. So Bill Burr talking about Norm Macdonald doing this, he was like, "There's no way I would have done that. Like that's the gutsiest thing I've ever seen." <laughs> It's like Jesus. Yeah, Bill Bill Burr is also one of the best com comedians of all time. I, I, well, I Bill, have Bill to Burr say is too. another like don't ever fuck with this guy comic. Yeah, and like when he was talking about Norm, um, like after his death, he was saying like you know when the people at SNL threatened him, stop making these OJ jokes. Like you could lose your job. And this is when he was pointing out like the Weekend Update is like the number one most desirable job a comedian could possibly have. You know, he was saying, like, well, most most people, when they heard that, they'd be, like, shaking. I, I know I would be. Norm? Nope. <laughs> he just wanted to do whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah, so um, Conan O'Brien, um, who is my favorite late-night comedian ever, um, you know, uh, he, he talked about... Um, uh, Norm here in the in the last in, in the last week because yeah he's just been uploading video after video of classic Norm moments yeah because a lot of his best um, bits were actually on Co the various versions of Conan's show yeah, um, and and Letterman his anecdotes yeah. in stand up are legendary yeah and um, the thing is um, Conan said it was because of uh, you know Norm and people like Norm that. Conan became famous, you know, and, and yeah. succeeded because he, when he was first starting out, Conan O'Brien was a writer on SNL around the same time. And he, he got the, you know, the late night, um, after David Letterman left and, um, it was a fledgling show. Like he, he, he was not a performer at that point. And, um, it was kind of a fluke that not, not a, really a fluke because Lorne Michaels chose him, but it was, it was kind of an un untested thing to give conan o'brien a show um yeah and, and one one thing he did mention by the way because yeah, norm really helped but in addition he because he he had like a, a speech about this when mm -hmm. dave letterman was going to host his last show it was when conan famously told everybody watching to change the channel to letterman <laughs> like now which is that that's crazy but he was saying when he was getting started and his show was pretty shaky on the ratings and everything mm-hmm uh, to this day, he never knew why, but Letterman himself showed up as a guest on his show, which yeah. there is absolutely no reason for a guy that big to do that, uh, mm -hmm. and that really helped pick up. And on a competing network, mind you. Um... Yeah, like, like I think he compared it to, like, the Rolling Stones or some super famous band doing, like, a gig in, like, a local bar or something. It's like, I guess they could, but why the hell would they? <laughs> also, mind you, that David Letterman was a, is um, a very private person, uh, kind of like Johnny Carson was, outside of, um, outside of his job, um, and will not interact with you if he doesn't want to. Um, yeah. And so... Yeah, the fact that he is personal friends with Conan O'Brien means a lot, um, yeah. because he he chooses who he hangs out with. Not and um, David Letterman really loves Conan, and still to this day he does. Uh, actually, one of the funniest things that uh, I, I know this is outside the norm, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's just so damn funny. Um, 
when Conan O'Brien uh, uh, left the, the Tonight Show, um, very tragically, in a completely different other drama yeah, yeah. Uh, filled craziness, um, <laughs> David Letterman gave him a gift. And uh, uh, he gave Conan a gift. And uh, I think it was when he got The Tonight Show, he gave him a gift um, to, to celebrate him. And he, he, what he did was he ended up giving him a horse, what? like as a gift, um, because he, you know, it, but I'll, I'll get to it. But it was a horse with like a gen, genetic issue, like a genetic problem, like so, like an unwritable, unusable horse, basically a a horse that is just a burden. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's a white elephant, except it's a horse. Yeah, correct. He he gave him a horse that basically he just has to keep alive and and <laughs> and, and and you know can't can't use for any practical horse purpose. Um, and like he just has to keep it alive. He has to stable it and keep it alive. Like that. That's why <laughs> it's like an insane gift. <laughs> he bought him a gift that costs him money and, and nothing and gives him no pleasure yeah. um <laughs> but anyway um yeah so so conan o'brien has norm on because he's basically he's working downstairs right because um late night films in the same building it's in 30 rockefeller plaza um as SNL, so a lot of a lot of his early guests, and even later on, were were people from SNL because they were right down the hallway. They would just come like after dress rehearsal or whatever. Um, and so, um, you know, he he invited Norman and had Norman all the time. And in some of his early um, early days, he had Norman a whole bunch. And um, this one with Courtney Thorne Smith on, oh my god! It, yeah, this it, is legendary. Is one of the funniest things that's ever happened on on a TV show in general, like on and live television. The funny television. thing is, it shouldn't be. Yeah, like from what happened, but it's hilarious. So, so Courtney Thorne Smith is is promoting a movie with Carrot Top in it. So and, and yeah, Carrot and, Top and the reason you're supposed to know who she is is because she was big on Melrose Place the TV show which yeah. I think had recently ended at the time. Yeah, but um a Carrot Top is uh, if you don't know him is considered one of the like th- th- he's like the punching bag comedian like everybody kind of just it, the joke is him like yeah, he's, he's a prop comedian who looks goofy from yeah. what i've seen people say online if you actually watch his show apparently it's pretty good but like how many of you have watched his show <laughs> it, it, it was it was hackney to say that he was a bad comedian at the time back then um yeah. like he 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 he, can't, he was made fun of in Saturday morning cartoon shows like i remember yes. um like the casper show making fun of him um like i i i distinctly remember that like he, he... Well, remember, remember remember austin powers when they finds doctor evil's plan like project vulcan underground drill new carrot top movie <laughs> <laughs> but like i didn't even get that at the time <laughs> also carrot top seemed to always um be in on the joke too like he he knew he was cringy like yeah, it, yeah. it was just like that kind of thing but um he's actually considered to be one of the richest comedians off of his, his work um because he like his residency is extremely lucrative um, which a lot of people don't realize. Like, there's Lar- uh, there's uh, like Seinfeld and and Larry David, and then there's him. Like, he he he's apparently like way up there um, in in terms of the richest comedians, which is insane to think about. But anyway, um, uh, so he, she's promoting this movie that she's in with him, which is now a forgotten movie, and the only reason why it's famous is because it's part of this. Um, yeah, like I, I should mention by the way, at the time. Like, I mean, she gave the title of the movie out, but we didn't even know what the movie was called. She's yeah. just, she's going to be in a movie with Carrot Top. What, like, I know nothing. What is this? So, so um, he's, he's basically just making fun of her while she's there because he's the other guest, right? Well, well, he, well, the thing is, he was the like, first guest. He, he tries playing it around it. He was like, well, no, I, I like you. I'll see the movie because of you. But like, he's bashing the thing that she's in. So that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, like, he, he, he's just railing on this. And Conan's, like, very clearly um, 
uncomfortable because he wants the other guests to feel comfortable, but Norm just keeps making fun of the, the you know, the other person's to thing. To the point where it, like, wins Conan over? <laughs> well, like, Conan, at that point, like, has conceded to the fact that he has lost control yeah, it's of, already of off the, the show. Yeah. Uh, and that, it, you know, if, if you don't know this, but, like, a host of a talk show... It, it, is the reason why the show is good because they're controlling everything that's going on. And if he he's not in control, then like you know, it, it, it usually goes badly, right? Yeah, but, um, the, but the thing is, even then, though, like particularly good hosts don't try to direct the conversation necessarily. They like they'll let the guests elaborate on whatever. Yeah, but Norm's just fucking interrupting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he won't let like. Courtney Thorne like, Smith talk yeah, really at this point. Yeah. Norm is the other guest. He's supposed to sit there silently and maybe go, "Oh, that sounds interesting," or whatever. And, and then, and then it, she, she's just like, uh, and and Conan's just like, "Oh, that Norm." Okay. Well, anyway, uh, so what's the name of the movie? And she goes, "Oh, well, it's Chairman of the Board." And then Conan's just no, like, no, no, "Oh, no, no, well, no, no, I, she, she didn't even get that far. She didn't even get that far." Norm, Norm goes, I'll, I'll, "You know what the movie's going to be called?" Oh, this is this is brilliant. I'll if if oh, it's going to be in a movie with T- Carrot Top, you know what it's going to be called? Box office poison. Oh, it's it, it was brutal, brutal. And, like, and like this is something that you don't see people do in real life. No, but she, she's she, making like, but, fun of the things she's trying to promote. Like, yeah, yeah, but no. But what I was what I was gonna say though is this is something you hear people talk about, but you never actually see. But she like. I'm not gonna say face palm because that's like oh how embarrassing yeah like, that was stupid but she like covered her face with her hand like oh fuck and like, she's also like, laughing at it she's laughing at it like well yeah part of it she must have been like yeah I know but like come on man help me it, out here. It, it, it is really uncomfortable for her and for Conan at the time and but, Conan's... But, but, but then but then the part you were gonna say oh so so she reveals the 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 title of the movie and 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 calls it uh, you know and it's yeah, chairman, chairman of, the of the board and Conan goes oh, Oh, good luck with that one, buddy. Yeah, do and then with that, you freak. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that one, you freak. And then Norm McDonald comes back instantly and goes, "Is it spelled B O R D? Yeah, I bet you it's spelled B O R E D." And, and everybody's dying. Yeah, Conan fucking lost it, and like Courtney like, Smith is the one person who like. She probably like she's not allowed to laugh. It's just, just like uh. oh, but and Andy Richter is there because he's the sidekick. He's always and, there, yeah. and 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 every like the audience just loses it. Like the audience is just, like, oh my god! Like you hardly ever see the guests in, interact with each other as well because they that like to give each happens. other their time. Yeah. Um, but like this was just he just eviscerated her yeah. and her movie uh oh, and by the way one other thing regarding a scandal and gift to conan by the way oh this is great this is great so the scandal regarding norm being kicked off of weekend tonight he showed up on letterman about that and was talking to him about it and letterman just he was like oh yeah Olmeyer kicked you off the show like i used to work at nbc i know him he's an idiot like he just point blank oh, just like nobody you, nobody says stuff like that about David like letterman any is higher up where he could get away with it but nobody fu- but like this is one of the very few cases I've seen where Norm is the one who's visibly uncomfortable the whole time. He's like, ah, nah, nah, come on, he's, he's a nice guy. But there, there was a very funny follow-up to that where he came back to Letterman later. And he's like, you know, last time you were on here, you are talking to me about your situation with Ulmeyer. And Norm was like, yeah, yeah, like, you kept saying he's an idiot, he's a pinhead. And I said, no, nah, no, he's a good guy. And, and Letterman's like, yeah. And Norm's like, well, it turns out you were right. <laughs> it was amazing. I, I think he, he went on Letterman like the day after he was fired too. Um, yeah, this is really yeah, funny. Yeah, but no. But regarding the gift, this, this oh, was this is Con- great. This was for Conan's benefit. I love this, and this, this is, is one old- of the funniest things that that has also ever happened on a on a talk show. Yeah. And, and this is something only a friend could do. If anyone else did that, they'd be an asshole. But like, you have to know someone to get away with little inside stuff like this. Yeah. But this was after Conan lost the Tonight Show. This and was on the last day uh, of the Tonight Show, last night of the t- Tonight Show. I that's th- what it was. I believe. So yeah, yeah, so he 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 was bummed about it, um, and Norm showed up. Uh, we, he had like a gift basket, and he's like, "I'm really sorry, I got this to you like six months ago when you first got announced to be on the Tonight Show, so it's a little late, but uh, I I got a letter for you, and I'll read it out loud, and <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> dear Conan." Congratulations on when making it to the Tonight Show. No one could take this away from you. 
Like, <laughs> that's something they can never take the take yeah, away. Yeah, that's something they can never take away from you. That's like this they was never clearly come up with as a brilliant idea by the brilliant brain trust at NBC. And knowing you, Conan, my friends, like knowing like it may seem a little scary, but miserable failure is not an option. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the the beauty of this was that like Conan was like you could tell a little bit like he was oh, uncomfortable he, he, it, about like the the upcoming show he was going to do for the night. Sure. Because, like, you know, Conan suffers from depression, and this also was a genuine blow to him. This fucking sucked. I, I mean... The, and Norman he, just laying it in Hosting The thick. Tonight Show was his dream, and he lost yeah. it. And, yeah. And, and Norman coming in with shit like this is, like... It's funny because it's so absurd, like, yeah. that it actually... It actually brought Conan back around. It was great. It, yeah, it was I'm, heartwarming, but also, like, really funny. Yeah, I mean, he... he, he that that entire saga I'll definitely look into it because it is uh, heartbreaking especially for conan um uh, like like conan is like the innocent person in the entire thing um yeah and, and, well, that that's the thing usually there's like a both sides like well no well well conan did this though but like no, no 100% of people just a are like no good conan person. is in the right yeah <laughs> J- conan ha- has and always will be uh, always has been uh like the best the nicest guy in Hollywood you know like like the nicest yeah. guy um i i wouldn't say hollywood but like in in entertainment in show business in show yeah. business yeah um like nobody's ever said a bad thing about him uh he's a genuine good kind person uh that all all, all he wants to do is do a good job um, I, don't, I don't know. Did you hear about how he tore apart Bob Saget? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he once went to a baseball game to, with me with a double-barreled shotgun. I said, Bob, what the H did you bring that for? And he said, well, Norm, you told me the Lions were playing the Tigers. <laughs> Come the fuck up. Uh, Actually, so, wait, wait, wait. We, 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 yeah, go ahead. We, we, we got to get to a couple other things. Um, sure. I mean, we... we you know what? We we might as well even split this uh, at this point, um, Lotus, because it, we're, we're at we're at over a half hour. Um, all right, all right. And, and uh, you know what? Norman deserves it, so I don't care. Uh, we'll yeah, we'll have a we'll have a part two. Yeah. So sure, sounds good. Let's move on to fan stuff. All right. Uh, so Living Corpse had a couple. One of them was going back to that um that that thing with the the Texas abortion thing. Uh, he said, in response to the GOP uh, passing the anti-abortion law in Texas that put bounties on women's heads, the Democrats are sponsoring a law called Texas Act that would put a 10K bounty on sexual abusers. I don't uh, that's know. That's fucked. That, I, I think that's fucked up too. Uh, I don't think um, regular well, I don't people. Know if, well, I don't know if it means anything. Like, yeah. rape's already illegal, and how many of those guys get punished? Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, and also, uh, I I don't think um, like people should be deputized. Uh, like yeah, nine. it's 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 like yeah, like what what do they call it? Well, yeah, you, you know when you hear about like racism against white people, and they're like, well, that's reverse racism. It's like, well, no, it, it's called it's still just racism. It's you mob know, like, justice, and I, I, I don't, yeah, like when when both like sides it. do it, it's bad, even when your side does it. <laughs> uh, for the most part, um, I think that like in unless something needs to be intervened, like if if you mind your own fucking business, you should be okay. And uh, I, I I don't know I. I, I do um, champion certain regulations and things like that. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I am, a, a, you know, an obvious leftist. Uh, but, like, uh, I also, like, I, I have a homeowners association, for instance, that um, monitors, um, you know, what people put on their decks. Like, fuck off. This is my house. Like, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? And so, like... Anytime when I see this kind of stuff, it's just like, you know, like, most people, like, aren't doing anything that bad. So, like, yeah, it's stop monitoring them. Yeah, it's literally a law to, like, meddle in other people's affairs. It, it, exactly. And it, it, not only that, but, like, it encourages um, people to be messed with that are innocent. Um, you know, because, That's like, too. you know, like, um, everybody else is up in each other's business and they're like, okay, this guy for sure must be a predator, you know, that, that, like that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't care who sponsored it. Um, uh, I am, uh, I'll be the first to say that even though, um, uh, a, a lot, uh, you know, I vote for Democrats. Uh, I, I know they're not perfect and I will point out that I don't like this. 
Yeah, so two wrongs don't make a right. They make two wrongs. Uh, I'll, I'll be now, the first to criticize criticize the uh, anything that's going on on either side. So like you yeah. know, <laughs> it's fair game to be criticized and and should be all of it should be scrutinized honestly. So. Yeah, and Living Corpse also says uh, I wanted to say this on the episode where you answered my question about things you like being overused, but life happened and I got sidetracked. So now actually answering it. I agree, I too am done with fan bases. When it got to the point when I asked myself, do I even want to hang out with these people anymore? Yeah. I knew it was time to leave. <laughs> they won't miss me. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, um, there, um, the only, the only, um, like, I tend to like small groups. I don't like gigantic ones. Well, that's um, the thing, well, well, well the, the thing with that, though, is like, at that point, they're just your friends. Yeah, exactly. Like, and they don't even have to be the friends you already knew. But if you get into a small group, they kind of become your friends. But when there's like 5,000 of them, you're not going to agree on everything. I mean, even with your close friends, you don't agree on literally everything. But yeah. like when it comes to the point where like literally the only thing we have in common is that I like Star Wars. It's like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, I it's it's very... Like, um... you, know, you know what that's called? That's called a crowd in a movie theater. You all show up at the thing. You all like it. You all leave. I find it very masturbatory, uh, like it, 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 like and, and very clicky too. Yeah, it, it, it gets clicky, and um, I, I find that the opinions of things just get recycled rather than like anybody actually critically thinking about anything. Yeah, and then, that and then you get into gatekeeper stuff. Yeah, well, and then you get into gatekeeper stuff too, and where you especially reveal how much or how how little the gatekeepers know when it's stuff like. You know, Miles Morales, since when did Spider-Man not be Peter Parker? Like, since over a decade ago? I guess you haven't been reading the comics? <laughs> yeah. Uh... Um, Dracologist has a, a very brief comment. <laughs> this was regarding your discussion of uh, Razion. Razion OST slaps. Yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the, the um, music is really good. Yeah, and Falcafon says, Mario Party, arbitrary? <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, man, I actually have a lot of things to say, but I'll try to restrict it. I'll just say that, yeah, we need more loading screen minigames. Those were so rad, even if it's just spinning Master Roshi by pressing X. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of thinking of... Um, Amaterasu, uh, <laughs> like getting that power up. Um, by, like, I haven't played that, but I was thinking No More Heroes, where all you do is just click on the little star and bounce it around. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, like, it's, it's so stupid, but it's like, eh, something, something to do, to do. With loading, I don't know. Yeah. Bayonetta um, has a great loading screen. It's just training mode. Yeah, that's pretty so cool. Awesome. Uh, and speaking of FF8, the computer version had this mini game called Chocobo World, which I think was a port of another version of the game that was played on a separate super tiny add-on console. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the pocket the PlayStation, station. The pocket station, yeah, which yeah. is Japan only. Uh, I didn't know that was on PC. That's pretty cool. Uh, I can't remember, but despite it being super simple in every way, it was fun. And yeah, my favorite Final Fantasy is the OG7. It's just the one I always had the most fun playing. Mostly because the majority of dungeons are short. Yeah, fair mm -hmm. enough. Which wasn't the case with the remake. I know a lot of people felt fatigue when going to the train graveyard, which was a single screen in the original game. Wow. Really? Finally, uh, Tekken Bowling with Akuma <laughs> is legendary. I <laughs> yeah, forgot they brought is. back bowling. Uh, and then School Filmer. Oh my god, School Filmer has returned. Uh. So finally, I'm back. Uh, a lot has happened. While, while I wasn't able to do much due to an uh, aged tech. I can mention a couple things, such as getting a smartphone, finally. Damn, I thought I was late to the party. <laughs> uh, suddenly losing motion on the left side of my face, although it's improved a bit over time. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry to, to hear, hear that. Yeah. Uh, here's the part I cannot believe. Finishing Mr. Smoozles Goes Nutso with the <laughs> twins. I wasn't expecting the game to just quit out after the ending and score tally. Yeah, some games just do that. They, yeah, just, they just quit. End. Yeah, you're done. You're done. Yeah. Goodbye. <clears throat> Good day, sir. <clears throat> yeah, you lose or you win. Uh, I got both vaccine shots because yeah, school filmers in what Norway, I think. Mm -hmm. So that like, sounds right. yeah, you can't just go to a CVS and get it because like, with America, it's gotten to the point where they become common, but that's not the case. Uh, everywhere, everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, I turned thirty years old and took everyone out for two hours of bowling. That oh, awesome. It's something I haven't done in a while. That's a good time. Uh, I lost my grandfather on the father's side to cancer, although at wow. least he managed to turn 91 before he passed on. I I'm very yeah, sorry. I'm sorry to hear, but that's sorry. that's that's a good age, though. And I feel fine otherwise. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands looks a lot like a lot of fun to me, especially since it looks like it expands on the Assault on Dragons Keep DLC and turns it into a whole game. The kicker? No Switch version. I don't mind 30 FPS and lower graphic capabilities, but it means I could take it with me. Yeah, that is quite the perk. Mm -hmm. It's good to be back. 
And then yeah, other, glad to have other, you. <clears throat> and then other comments. Regarding late DLC, um, Borderlands 2's DLC, Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary, is one. Is it arrived seven years after the game came out? Oh, wow. What the fuck? I just wouldn't even acknowledge it at that point. That's that's way too late for me. And well, yeah, I at... think it just ties in the later games, that's why. Um, okay. Yeah. And it takes place after Tales from the Borderlands. There you go. Uh, there you go. And before Borderlands 3. I've had fun with this DLC, though. And uh, cool. the question... This question is uh, from Fakafan, so thank you very much. And this is now also our last question. Um, this is an elaborate one to ask, but you know how video games rarely have a definitive set way of doing something? Like, you know, PS4 save menus. So the same on every game on that system. Mm -hmm. right? Like the same for the sure. PS3, PS3, same thing actually. Uh, there's never a cemented way of doing anything in a game. So here's the question. Imagine if, early on in game development history... It had been decided that every game with a final boss would, for some reason, use the same music. <laughs> uh, so there is just a final boss theme across every game ever made that has a final boss. What would you choose? I'd probably go with Parasite Eve's Ultimate Being theme. You know, this is funny. I was looking this up just before we recorded the cast today. Because I was going to say, ooh, I don't know. Because Parasite Eve's music is thematic and there are musical callbacks like, in the regular Eve fight theme, it calls back to the opera singing and the mitochondria theme. It's brilliant. So I was like, I don't know about Ultimate. But then I looked up the Ultimate being, and that seems to stand alone, and it kicks ass. So you know what? That's a good choice. Because um, I'm trying to think of really cool final boss themes. Like, there's, there's Chrono Trigger's one, but oh wait, that calls back to Lavos and the Chrono Trigger main theme. So I can't just put it in everything, you know? Um, I, I might... Again, this is too somber for a lot of final bosses. This doesn't have, oh, cool, epic fight. This has, like, super serious final boss music, so I don't know if it would translate to everything. But I rather like uh, the Eternal Darkness final boss theme when you're fighting Pius. It's just somber. Or Smithy Phase 1 in Mario RPG ain't bad either, um, where it starts off with mm. slow, dramatic organ music, but then it goes into, like, a rock thing. It's almost like the Buffy TV show with the old-timey organ music, like, ooh, vampires, and then it goes mm -hmm. into, like, rock, which is kind of dated by today's standards, but it was like, yeah, cool, in the 90s. Wow. So, m my thought on it, Lotus, is, uh, I I think Ode to Joy would be my choice. Uh, Beethoven's Oh, that's interesting. Um, be Beethoven? Yeah, Beethoven. Um, but, uh, so, um, Ode to Joy is, has been played at many climaxes in many many movies was um, the, just to make sure i know this is the da, na, 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 yes na, na. correct uh, yeah, that in, was popularized as not being just classical music in like die hard i think it was i was just gonna say including die hard because uh, that that was a subversion it, it was like in spinal tap where they play like like back then that was a joke but today yeah. when you watch it you're like okay that was a weird aside but back then it was funny because you just don't do that with a rock guitar yeah so, yeah so, so die hard did that to Ode the joy yeah so it, it was just like you know um a, a a song that has religious implications being the celebration of the uh of the villains of the film um, i could particularly see that with like creepy dystopian like angel bosses like in disgaea or something uh, well i was going to say speaking of it, it's in end of evangelion rebuild 4 um in the climax enough. of that um so yeah i i i i just think that uh if if a boss shows up and ode to joy plays like oh man you are in for a battle um, it even makes me think of i don't think they actually used it for the the, the music but, like, the final boss of Bayonetta is, like, Jubileus, which is, yeah. like, you know, Jubilee or Jubilation. That's, like, that's joy. You know, there it is. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I I, I think that... It, and it's also one that could be easily played on... Um, like, you could you could play that on early synthesizers in, in arcade music. Oh, so. well, not, not only that. Some of those old arcade games, like, not that they used that particular music, but, like, before they had, like, licensed tracks of their own, some of those old games would just appropriate play the jo oh, joy yeah. or something like that yeah yeah they would just use chiptune I, I remember i don't remember what game it was but some old-timey arcade game it might have been like penguins pushing ice blocks or something they used uh popcorn from craftwork yep. like, oh yeah no you're right um it, that is pango from sega 
Yeah. There, okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> um, the Ro- uh, Rainbow Islands basically just uses uh, somewhere over the rainbow. Um, um, okay. From that's from pretty Wizard gutsy. You're gonna go after uh, who was that? Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Yeah. Well, um, here's the thing. They they basically made it legally distinctive, but it's it's it. I mean. Oh, okay. On. So it's like I am man in Ninja Gaiden. I, it's it. I mean, they they change. They change like three notes. A, uh, yeah, a couple <laughs> notes, but it's it's like you're shooting rainbows. It's somewhere over the rainbow. Get, okay. Get real. Okay. It's a um, uh, it, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. It's just like you know what no. that reminds me of. What was Wait, that? You know what I find you know what that reminds me of. What was and that? Th- this isn't this isn't the same thing because these these are clearly distinctive enough. But in a JoJo All Star Battle. Uh, a lot of the characters' music, not all of them, but a bunch of the characters' music are, like, allusions to whom they're named after. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, like, ACDC, the character, has, like, this crazy guitar riff that's... It's not Thunder Horse. Like, it's definitely distinct, but you could tell it was supposed to be Th- an homage Thunderstruck, to Thunderstruck, you mean? Thund- Thunder- yeah, Thunder Horse is fucking Metalocalypse. Yeah, Thunderstruck. Yeah. And, um, and there's a part where, in the middle of the, the music, it just goes off and goes, like, doo, doo, doo. Do do from like uh, back in black. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. that, that's the only part they do. They don't keep going with da, it. But you're like, ah, da, da, da. see what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it's just one of those things, uh, you know. Like, um, but uh, Ode to Joy, I think, is just like also fitting. Uh, you know, it's just like um, yeah, I like, made it. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's yeah, but it it it's almost like um. It's ironic in like in in Die Hard and Evangelion. It's it's ironic. It's something well, horrifying well, with, with, is with, happening. Um, well, well, yeah. Well, with Die Hard, it was more of an action scene, but it was. I don't even know if it was ironic so much as just like, can you do that? But with Evangelion, yeah, it's, it's ironic, ironic because this is an angel and it's an it's enemy. It's killing everyone. Um, yeah, like the the music is appropriate for what it is, but there's no joy to be found here this is a holy song exactly. and it is an angel but i don't like a minute of this yeah, yeah the the angels are destroying the the humanity in the humans um so like that's that that's not particularly great um like yeah like, like i mentioned again it reminds me of disgaea when you get near end game in disgaea you actually invade heaven because like you're all demons and i don't know what it sounds like in japanese because the ps2 game was dub only but the angels are intimidating because like i mean they're basically just soldiers in white but like their voices are just super flat like they're just like die and they just do their attack it's just like what is this like i think i like hell better um well ode to joy is also very bombastic it's a it's a it's a bombastic song so like um um it's big and loud and jubilant uh so like it, it, it as it should be it's yeah an ode it's, to joy yeah exactly so it it's it's just one of those things like like I, I, I like it as a uh, as a culmination song like it's just it's awesome uh, I think it's sure. really good so um, any any other thoughts on this one Lotus it's tough because like again whatever I choose like some final bosses are comical some of them are super action this is gonna be awesome some of them are creepy and intimidating so like I can't get a vibe that'll encompass them all but I'm I, like whatever I would pick would be something that's not thematic of the particular game that you just played or else it'll be losing context in every other game like again chrono trigger you'll occasionally hear in the background that lavos theme like so like it sounds cool in any other context but it calls back to lavos a character that does not exist in games that are not chrono trigger oh I i forgot what games i've seen this in also uh so uh ode to joy was in binary land um, which is uh, where you're controlling two uh, penguins, uh, um, oh. like on an early Famicom game. Um, okay. What uh, penguins keep coming up? Um, it also it was in Peggle, uh, which is what I remember. <laughs> I'm I'm like my brain was reaching back, like what game did I hear this in? And it was Peggle. Um, yeah, I don't think I've heard of the joy in a game. Yeah, no, I, I I've heard it uh, like in Peggle. It's it's great because like it, it plays when you when you beat the uh when you beat the level so it, it's it makes just sense one of those things yeah it, it's great but uh yeah a- any other thoughts lotus no i'm probably good 
Okay, well, um, that is going to be the show for this week. We want to thank all of our fans who contributed uh, comments and questions. A lot, a lot of comments this week. Thank you. Uh, yeah, a whole and a, bunch. And but a lot I'll, of... I'll say it one more time. This is the last question that we have because Vakavon provided it for this week. Uh, but again, that is our last one. I, I also want to thank our our returning commenters. Uh, thank thank you for coming back. Uh, we we mm-hmm. we love you, and uh, you are. I tell you what, you're the only fan base I truly love. Um, yeah, you know what? Touche. Uh, please keep us Your support. Supply. Helps keeps the show going. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean we, we have we have a group of the same people that uh, interact with us all, basically all the time. So I mean, like that that has to count for something. That it, it, it's kind of our own little um, conversation that goes on, be, you know, amongst well, everybody. It, it, it kind of calls back to what I was saying earlier when it like there comes a point where it gains a certain level of intimacy. If we had yeah. a million people commenting, it's like. I don't know who you are, but we get more familiar because there are, like, some people. Like, a bunch, but, like, few enough that we can recognize who they are. I mean, somebody like fil- School Filmer comment- comments so often he's part of the show. Uh, I mean, so, like, him telling us where he's been and what's happened to him means something to us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I please, um, you know, continue uh, to be part of the show. Um Please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting questions of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. Keep in mind yeah, that that's that's your way of, you know, um, affecting what what happens on the show. I mean, that's why why we ask for it. While there, please give us thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. Helps to pr- promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Tuesday f- for our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth look at this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Visible on pretty much everything. And you could follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play or getting in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprince. Wonderful. We'll all catch you shortly then. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.